Health officials confirmed that the United States had suffered its first measles-related death in more than a dozen years. She was undiagnosed, and the cause of her death was only discovered in an autopsy. The news comes just days after California Governor Jerry Brown signed what's being called the strictest vaccination law in the country. The law bars parents from opting out of vaccination requirements due to religious or other objections. I'm joined now by one of the law's toughest opponents, former assemblyman and one-time Republican gubernatorial candidate Tim Donnelly. He currently hosts the Tim Donnelly Show on KIXWAM Radio in Southern California. Tim, thanks for being with me, sir. You recently filed paperwork, I understand, to, to get a referendum on that law. Uh, what's your, your main point of contention with the new law? Well, the main point of contention is, should we wipe out religious liberty in the name of public health? And is this law, SB 277, which forces every child to be vaccinated or they can't go to public or private school with other kids, is it really going to be effective at doing anything to further protect public health? How, do, how then do we strike that balance between religious liberty and public health? And it sounds as if you acknowledge that public health is something that we should work to, to protect. Well, absolutely. I mean, look, first of all, I vaccinated my own kids, but I did that of my own free will. I made that choice and it was an informed decision. And there's a lot of parents that want to make that same choice and some for religious reasons are choosing not to and others for personal beliefs and we've had that exemption for a long time in california we've never had any great outbreaks and this measles outbreak at disneyland if you look at the cdc information 45 percent of the victims were unvaccinated but the cdc says they still don't know who caused it but or we, what the actual cause was. But we do know that there are 150 people across the West Coast who, who contracted the disease. How, how do we make sure that this unvaccinated child whose parent opted out because of religious reasons, how do we make sure that that child, when that child comes in contact with my 15-month-old, um, how do we make sure that, that, that there's not a disease that's contracted, that that unvaccinated child isn't, you know, infecting others. Well, first of all, we don't know that an unvaccinated individual caused this measles outbreak, but that's who they've targeted. And, 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 and to answer your question, th this outbreak didn't happen in the schools, and that's what they're cracking down on. Th this happened in a public place, in a place that millions and millions of people visit every year. I mean, what does everybody say after a great accomplishment in life, a Super Bowl victory, where are you going? I'm going to Disneyland. We don't know if it was a, could possibly have been a foreign visitor. We don't check people's vaccination records at the airport, nor am I advocating that we do that because tourism is good for our economy. So th there has to be a balance somewhere. And, and th the bottom line is that they passed a law that is, it, it, without even knowing the true cause of the outbreak. And, and I think that's legislating a solution without really fully understanding the problem. All right. I do appreciate your time. Thank you so much, Tim Donnelly. Let's get to the other side of this issue. Uh, proponents like Governor Brown say the benefits of vaccination uh, far outweigh the risks. I'm joined now from Houston by Dr. Peter Hotez. He's director of the Texas Children's Hospital Center for Vaccine Development uh, and also dean at, at Baylor College of Medicine. Uh, Dr. Hotez, I don't, I don't know if you could hear uh, any of, of my exchange uh, a few moments ago uh, with Mr. Donnelly? Yeah, Could you? I did. I, I, had, I had the opportunity, yeah. What, what do you make of, of, of that claim, of what, what he was claiming? Well, I think he, he's, he's, unfortunately, he's misinformed. I mean, this is not a, a religious liberty issue at all. It's a child safety issue. What had happened was the uh, California elementary schools, uh, parts in Marin County, Berkeley, Albany, elsewhere, had percentages of unvaccinated children that were 10 percent, 20 percent, 30 percent, even 40 percent. What had happened was the elementary schools in California had become dangerous. They were dangerous places for children. The California legislature and the governor had no choice but to act and to get those kids vaccinated. Remember, these diseases, measles, uh, diphtheria, whooping cough, 
These are the most deadly diseases on our planet. Uh, measles kills 80,000 children a year, whooping cough 56,000 children a year. And the reason is our children don't die of those diseases is because we get them vaccinated. Uh, Dr. Otez, is there some middle ground in this debate? I mean, can health officials meet parents halfway to control the spread of contagious and, and deadly diseases uh, like the measles, like whooping cough, uh, like the mumps uh, that, that you mentioned? Is there, is there room in the middle or no? Unfortunately, Mother Nature doesn't give us a lot of room. These uh, infectious agents are the most highly transmissible agents no known. I mean, we know about Ebola virus infection, right? That can infect a single infected individual will infect on average one or two. With measles, it's 15 to 18. These things spread like wildfire, and the only way to prevent them is to get more than 90% vaccine coverage. Uh, otherwise, uh, measles epidemics are going to spread throughout. And unfortunately, we just had our first measles death, the first one in 12 years. Uh, in the United States, and it's only because we have unvaccinated individuals. Dr. Otez, as you know, there are still a number of parents out there uh, that, that believe that there is this correlation, if not causation, between vaccinations and a number of, of ailments or diseases, uh, including autism. How do health mm -hmm. professionals like yourself, how do you deal with those parents? Well, you know, I, I'm, I'm in an interesting position because I'm both a vaccine researcher, I make vaccines for neglected tropical diseases, uh, but at the same time, I'm also the parent of a child with severe autism and other mental disabilities. And one of the things that we know about autism, it's a genetic or epigenetic uh, disease. It has absolutely nothing to do with vaccines. The changes that occur in the brain are happening while the baby's still in the womb. So uh, we know that there's no link between vaccines and autism, and it's been well proven. Dr. Hotez, that, uh, that's a, a very unique perspective, sir. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Have a good fourth.